Hi, how are you? This is Sandstorm here, and welcome back to part two of our British Empire series in Hearts of Iron 4. If you missed the last episode, go check it out. There will be a link in the description. But to recap, we uh, turned fascist, starting as the UK, and sailed across the English Channel and easily captured France, annexing all of its lands. So the first thing we're going to do in this episode is to do what I tried to do last episode, which is to go over to Germany and join their faction, which they will accept. Pause. And we're in the Axis. And this is very handy because now we can see what focus Germany's doing. All right, they're doing reassert Eastern claims. But what I want to make sure that we do is take over the regions that they get war goals on before they can actually take them over so we can weaken Germany and get the land for ourselves. So when the time comes eventually to take out Germany, they won't be all that difficult to take out. So the first thing we're gonna do is justify a war goal on Belgium because Germany gets a war goal on Belgium through the focus around Maginot. And they also get a um, war goal on the Netherlands and Luxembourg. So we will take those out as soon as possible. We got a few military factories from our conquest with France, so I'm going to focus them all on building fighters and tactical bombers so we can become the major power in the air. We completed the national focus, the Singapore strategy, so we're going to head on over and do landward fortifications, I believe. All right, so Germany has done their focus, and they claim Memel. And they have taken this province here, Memel, from Lithuania. Let's see what their next focus is. They're doing the extra research slot, so we have plenty of time to run in and take over the countries that they would get war goals on. And we also just finished fuel refining too, so I guess we'll go and do rubber processing. Let's also bring the Air Force over to northern France and put them in the Benelux region. I'm also going to begin a war goal justification on the Netherlands because I believe it is the most time efficient to be justifying two war goals at once instead of uh, justifying one and then uh, waiting for the first one to finish to justify another. We just completed computing machines, so I'm going to go down and research decryption. And we got a few free civilian factories. So I guess we'll build some more civilian factories in France. We got the decimetric radar done, so we'll go and do encryption. We got landward fortifications done, and I think we're going to... Let's see, I think we're going to go down to the industrial effort over here. And then go down to that extra research slot, which is going to be very handy for us to have. Our justification just completed on Belgium, so we're just going to go in and immediately declare war. And with the Navy already set out from our war with France and the Air Force set out to the Benelux region, our army will be able to simply walk in and take Belgium quite easily. Not sure why this guy isn't attacking, but we'll give him manual orders. And same with you. Oh, we got the uh, encryption done. Let's just pause and put another research on. We'll go with the uh, decimetric radar. Or sorry, the improved decimetric radar. We'll get a nice little encirclement of this one division here. And we're about to take Brussels. And if we can run on to Antwerpen. And also get Brussels. Then we will win the war. And it looks about... That's about to happen. I wonder why their capital didn't move to Brussels. Alright, Belgium has capitulated, and as always, let's take all states. Now we're done, and it's time for us to start justifying a new war goal. I think we'll do... Well, let's see, has Germany got a new focus? They're doing Befriend Japan. Alright, we've got plenty of time. I think we're actually going to go and do Ireland. Ireland holds this province, Leinster. I'm not exactly sure of the pronunciation of this province, but if you take a look at our form new nation, the Angevin Empire, we have every single province except for Leinster, which is at the top, 
Um, so once we take Ireland, we will be able to form that, which will core all states here, as it says in the description, which will allow us to gain tons and tons of manpower. All right, let's stack the army on the Dutch border. All right, we got rubber processing done. We're going to switch all the way over to the infantry tab and research some infantry weapon upgrades. We'll go with improved infantry equipment one. Thank goodness I know how to edit these parts out. Decryption is done. Let's go for the other infantry upgrade. And our industrial effort focus is done. Let's go down and get that extra research slot in the focus, which is so named extra research slot. And I just noticed we have quite a few planes in reserves. So I'm going to go over to this airport here in France and deploy our planes in wings of 100s. You can do that by shift clicking on these buttons with the hashtag and the arrow on it. And we just got three new air wings out to join the fight. Integrated support is done. Let's just keep going down the doctrine tree. Wow, an extra 25% soft attack and organization. This is a really good doctrine to do. And we've got some free military factories. Do we need any infrastructure upgrade? No, we do not. All right, let's just build some more civilian factories. I think we're fine on militaries for now. And we got five new free troops, which we're just going to pour into our army. We got enough political power to change our conscription law. I think we're going to head up to extensive conscription, changing our recruitable population from 2.5% of the population to 5%. And our justification is complete for the Netherlands. Let's immediately declare war. And let's begin a justification on nationalist Spain. Oh, we don't have enough political power. All right. Let's just wait for one more political power. And if you see, the Dutch do not have enough troops for every tile on our border because they have to fortify our border with Germany as well because we are allies with them. So we're just going to move our troops around, hopefully into Rotterdam and Amsterdam, capitulating them. But otherwise, I think our troops should be able to take them out. Yeah, they're getting pinned. And we improve the decimetric radar. Let's go over... Let's get the Crusader tank. All right, Nationalist Spain just won. So we will get the war goal going now. We have enough political power. And we just took Amsterdam. Is this enough to capitulate them? Not quite. Alright, let's take uh, Eindhoven, and that might do it. And they called in the Dutch East Indies, which means we will be able to take them in the peace conference. Which is great, because they have a lot of resources, and they just capitulated. So, let's pass a few times and take all states from the Netherlands and also satellite the Dutch East Indies. And that's us done. There we go. We just annexed the Netherlands and the British East Indies are here. Oh, we did have a naval combat. With who? Oh, with the Dutch. We sunk one of their submarines. <laughs> Bruh. All right, we got some free military factories. We're having a little glitch with the infantry equipment right now. We used to have a huge stockpile, but now we're out of it. And we also have a free dockyard. I think we'll go with the destroyer too. Add an extra dockyard there. And I guess we'll put the army up on the Irish border. We're also going to move the air force over to the British Isles. We have about 1,500 planes, so... We'll have to move some to here and some to there. And they should all probably have range to hit Ireland. Yes, they do. Perfect. All right. Germany's doing uh, the demand Sudetenland focus. And there was really no way that we could uh, get to Czechoslovakia to deprive them of their focuses for dividing up Czechoslovakia. Because they are a landlocked country, and it's uh, just going to be a pain to get there anyway. May as well let Germany have one little conquest. We completed Improved Infantry Equipment 1. And I guess we'll just go on for a another upgrade to the infantry equipment. The Stenmark 2. 
Alright, we completed our national focus, and we'll go with the Royal Ordnance Factories, because it gives us six free military factories. And Germany also completed their national focus. Um, so this is a decision basically letting um, us to decide whether Germany wants to take the Sudetenland, which is this province here. And I think they also get this province here. Um, or if we have Germany, just go to war with them. Let's just let them have a little bit of conquest. And look at that. Germany just gobbled a little bit. Now let's see. They're doing the first Vienna Award. Which lets Hungary take a little bit of Czechoslovakia, I think. And then they're eventually just going to eat up the rest of it. And Zog just submitted. We... Oh, darn. Alright, Italy's going to join the Axis. We weren't quite quick enough about this. I would have liked to take out Italy before they join the Axis. But it is what it is. And we just got another infantry upgrade done. I think we'll go with the Bren Carrier. Even though it is ahead of time, we have a 100% research bonus. And we have a free research slot from our national focus. I think we'll go with an artillery upgrade. I'm going to relocate the Navy to the Western Approaches, which completely encompasses Ireland. Although this isn't really necessary because they have zero ships. But, you know, it's nice to give them that amount of respect. We have a lot of tanks, so I'm going to start a new training tab and train up five tanks. And our justification on Ireland is complete. And just like the Netherlands, there are gaps in the front lines, so we don't even really need to fight them. We just need to take their two victory points and get out. And this is a good thing because we are overloading the supply zone here. So uh, our troops are not at full fighting strength. So we're just going to go and run down. We're defeating them anyway. And the Luxembourg Concordat just got formed. And... Oh my gosh. If Luxembourg declares war on me right now. Well... I don't know why that just formed, but... I guess Luxembourg's going to declare war on me. So we got to take out... Yep, there they go. We got to take out... Ireland quickly, but Luxembourg should really be no problem since they only have one division. Let's just take out Ireland and move the army back, because we need to get there to go to Spain anyway. Ireland is capitulated. Let's move the army down to Luxembourg. I uh, don't think they're at war with Germany, though. Let's just do... Oh, come on. I hate when it does this. I only want to attack from our border, because Germany is not at war with them. They really only have one division, so we don't really need a full battle plan. But it's nice to give them that respect. The Panay incident just occurred. More free military factories. I guess we'll keep pouring them into infantry equipment. May as well move the planes back down to Spain. There's a 2,000 airport around here, so I think they should all, or most, should be able to reach northern Iberia. And just give them a manual order to go into Luxembourg. Their troop is outside of their victory point. Which means that they're going to instantly capitulate once we walk into Luxembourg. And they're getting pinned there anyway. And that's it. We're going to take all states from everyone. And we're done. Now, if we go into our decisions tab, we could form the United British Isles. The Angevin Empire gives us more manpower since it also uses France. So I think we're going to go with the Angevin Empire, although I do love the name, the British Empire, and I do love the British Empire flag. It's sad to see it go, but we're going to form the Angevin Empire. And we just got extra stability. So that is amazing, and our manpower should be going up. We've already got like a million anyway. So let's move the armies down to Spain. We are going to... We might have to call Germany in for this one. We're going to put an army here. That is going to try and run to Madrid. We're going to put an army here. Which is just going to try and push the front. 
and we're going to select 10 here to create a new army and we'll assign General Allen Cunningham and we'll set a naval invasion from Toulon to Valencia and that will cause a nice distraction for their troops and I guess we'll move the navy and how many ships does Spain have? Ooh, they do have a little bit of a fleet so what we want to do is move these 60 ships over uh, to no not there move to the western Mediterranean Sea there we go and we'll move this other fleet of 15 over to the western Mediterranean as well and we'll sign this last army just to the main border and we'll try and spearhead them to Madrid just got a bunch of notifications about factories so I think we'll start building some military factories again in the British Isles we'll assign the new military factories to production line on the light tanks and fighters and the dockyards are going to be assigned to Oh, we got a lot of dockyards from that. I did not know Ireland had that many dockyards. We will go here and just assign some more dockyards to every ship at the top of the list. All right, Italy just joined the Axis. And we just completed Royal Ordnance Factories. So I think we'll go down to Air Rearmament because we get extra free air bases. We also got four free military factories. So we'll go and assign one to Heavy Fighters and another to artillery and some more over to the plains we'll send some planes down to southern Iberia and deploy them over the air region and we'll assign these next five troops to this army here oh my gosh the allies are stacking on this border here finish the crusader tank I think we'll just go straight for another medium tank upgrade. It's a little bit ahead of time, but it's worth it. And we're going to create a new production line with the medium tanks. And there we go. Assign a bunch of military factories to it. Because I eventually want to switch our tank template to the medium tank. So I want to have a huge stockpile for when we start training them. We got our artillery upgrade. Let's go for another one. So let's keep an eye on Germany's focuses because they're doing fate of Czechoslovakia, which allows them to take the rest of Czechoslovakia. I think after this, they're going to do Danziger War. And it's a pity we couldn't get to Poland before they got to it. But we should probably try and get to Denmark and Norway before they can get to it. Also, we just finished on Spain. I'm wondering if we can push the front line without our allies being called in if we can't we'll just call them in so let's declare war and war has been declared let's see if we can push out of Gibraltar there's three Spanish troops in every tile over here so we'll just put all 14 of our troops into one tile and try and push it let me just check their plane count alright they don't have that many planes we should be able to win the air battle fairly easily and let's see if we can win the northern front without allied support All right, not really. Let's call in Germany. There we go. That didn't really change much. Have we still got air supremacy? Yes, we have. Oh, there we go. Now they're turning green. We got some military factories. I guess we'll put another one on medium tanks. And we are out of tungsten we have so many factories we may as well just order some tungsten from let's see Portugal we'll take them over soon anyway and I need to be justifying more war goals let's do Portugal first since the armies are already going to be over here and let's then do Denmark a naval battle just happened I'll get that out the way nothing really happened in that battle we just finished another infantry upgrade and the next ones are ahead of time, so I think we'll go over and start a naval doctrine. Uh, what is this? Battle fleet concentration. 
let's go for the battle fleet concentration and research it. Oh, and we broke Spain in the south. Um, this might be it. If we can keep running, then we'll not even have to worry about the north because they're going to reroute a bunch of their forces. Oh, and we are in a naval battle. Did they catch our convoy or did we catch their convoy? By the way, our naval invasion just launched, and I think it's over for Spain because it's at 97, and we just got there. So once that naval invasion lands, it's completely over for Spain. Probably is already anyway. And we got some more military factories. Let's assign another one to heavy fighters. We're about to have a 100 stack to deploy. More civilian factories are open. I think we're going to need some synthetic refineries since we do appear to be out of fuel. And we just finished air rearmament. Let's go with air defense because it will help us to guard the home islands from the air raids that other countries like to carry out on us. And the naval invasion landed and we did a few more battles. Nothing much really happened. Let's set this army on a nice order to just fan out and spread and we'll be able to push easily um it isn't what we agreed on we'll let germany have a little bit of conquest and we're pushing out of this naval invasion very very nicely this beachhead was a good one a significant development indeed let's see yeah japan looks like they're gonna win this one just like usual sometimes china does win though we got some free military factories also we got to change our infantry equipment to the infantry equipment 2 which is the upgrade so we're going to put some more military factories so we can convert all of those over and they caught our convoy see this is just too many fronts for Spain to handle and why are oh our front lines just here okay I guess that's why we've been pushing so good because our forces are so concentrated and we linked up the naval invasion and we linked up the front line I think no not quite but we will do that soon what is our war participation? Oh, it's less than 50%. It's going up, though. It's going up. And we're gaining plenty of army XP from this. There is a naval battle that just happened, and we lost. Well, that's surprising. We've still got mostly full superiority. Uh, we're about to link these up. We did the Bren carrier. And let's choose a new research. I think we'll go for another upgrade here. It's barely ahead of time, and we could really use it. Nothing much happening in these naval battles. Oh, we caught three of their convoys. Well, Germany caught three of their convoys. Uh, we got a nice encirclement down here. Let's just run straight for the port. Uh, in fact, we can do just that with this division. And everything is linked up, and Spain is close to capitulation. Well, that's what happens when you attack them right after the Civil War. They have so many negative modifiers and a decreased troop count that it's really hard for them to, f to defend from any outside attack. We've been encircling here, I'm not sure why that- oh, they have seven divisions there. Well, dang, we're about to take Madrid, are we? Yes, we are. Let's take Madrid. Come on. Here we go. Why are we not taking Madrid? Let's move in. I think that might capitulate them. Oh, they've already capitulated. What did Germany do? Okay, Germany took everything that's not mainland Spain, which makes me think they might give me their war score because they're not interested in Spain. Oh, and I cannot take all states. So let's see if Germany takes anything. Okay, so let's see what we can take minimizing the border gore there's a 28 province here that is just barely connected to our land let's see can we take Catalonia as we can oh we can take that too okay that is good can we take this no how much is that worth 18 okay can we take anything else uh, it appears not let's end the turn and see what Germany does Oh, they just gave me their war score. How very kind. Let me pass so I can take all states. There we go. Thank you so much, Germany. We're both helping each other out. All right, let's take everything, and we're done. 
Well, that was a very nice peace conference. Usually your allies get in the way a lot more than that. So Germany took five states, we took 21 states, and Nationalist Spain was annexed. And let's go park on the Portuguese border. Uh, let me just put the naval invasion back into the regular army. And let's get to the Portuguese border. I don't think we're going to need any allied help from this one. Let's move the planes as well. And German. Okay, Germany's justifying against Poland. That is expected. Oh, they're just doing a straight out justification. They're not even waiting for Danziger War. Alright, let's uh, change our artillery to the artillery upgrade. Now, we need to keep an eye on America's division count. Because I want to take them out before they become too powerful. I think we might do them after we do Denmark. In fact. Um, because they might become too powerful for us to take out for a while if we don't take them out soon. So, let's go and do some more research. Um, we can get another artillery upgrade. We're out of steel. I guess we'll import from Germany. More dockyards. I'll just assign one to the destroyer to at the top of our list. Once this little glitch goes away, you'll see that we have like 100,000 infantry equipment. So what I'm going to do, we have plenty of army experience. I'm going to go into our recruit and deploy menu and change our infantry division over to a 40 width infantry division, which is probably the optimal infantry division for fighting in Europe and North America. And we just have better divisions now. They're still at full strength and full organization. So let's just wait for our justification on Portugal. We completed our air defense focus. Let's go for Peninsular War. All right, second Vienna War just happened, meaning that Hungary gets a bit of Romania. And Portugal justification is ready. Uh, no supply zones are being overloaded. Let's declare war. And all the airplanes are out. We have complete and total superiority over the air. Resume the offensive. All their troops are deorganized. Oh, they're getting overrun. All right, well, um, Portugal had a good run, but they will not be able to stand up to our huge land force. Oh, look, uh, we, we broke their front line in the north. We broke their front line everywhere at this point. Let's just run to Lisbon. We've taken Porto. So once we take Lisbon, they should capitulate. And Portugal capitulates. Let's take all states. And that's Portugal done. Now we're going to... Let's see, we cannot do a land invasion of Denmark. Because if we call Germany in, that'll just defeat the whole point of the reason we're doing this invasion. So what we're going to have to do is first assign our free dockyards. Uh, Portugal had one. And get some more steel from Germany. And then we're going to detach 10 divisions. These 10 should do. And assign a new commander. I think General Alan Cunningham should do just fine again. And we will leave from the Netherlands. And let's see. I think the Straits will be locked once we declare war on them. So we will just land behind the front lines in this province here. How long is this going to take? This is going to take 70 days. We'll set the rest of the army in a fallback line in the same port in the Netherlands so they can quickly and easily transport once we have made our first landing. And we'll move the Air Force up as well. We got our next land doctrine done. We'll go with the mechanized offensive. This is the only one we can do. And we got some more divisions down. Ooh, five tank divisions. Let's make a new tank army. And we'll get General Neil on this one. Let's get some more steel from Germany. And let's get a backroom backstabber for a political advisor. Because of that extra political power gain, now we're making 0.9 per day, which is amazing. We got some free military factories. I think we'll assign another one to the light tank. And all the divisions are here. 
let's set out the Navy. I think we'll set our English Channel fleet over to the Eastern North Sea. And we got an extra research slot available for us. Let's go research rocket artillery. Germany is doing the Molotov Ribbentrop Pact. Our justification on Denmark is complete. Our naval invasion, though, is not ready, so we're going to have to wait another 15 days before we declare war. And I think all their troops are on Germany's front line. Yeah, I think that's all their divisions. And we finished the Peninsular War focus. I think we'll go and hold Hong Kong. And we got more divisions. Let's put them in this army here with only seven divisions in it. And apparently we have more planes to deploy. So let's see if we can... Yes, we can definitely deploy some more 100 groups. The Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact has been completed, giving Germany a non-aggression pact with the Soviet Union. And the Soviet Union is doing transformation of nature. Interesting. Now, what is Germany doing? Now they're finally doing Danziger War. Now, why are they justifying on Poland? Because this is going to be complete before this. Maybe Poland will actually give in since I'm in the Axis. Oh, and Italy is also justifying against Yugoslavia. Yeah, they're just doing a straight-up justification as well. I guess we'll let them have a little bit of conquest. The Soviet Union just took a little bite out of Romania and took Bessarabia. All right, the naval invasion is now ready. Let's declare war on Denmark. Everything is set. Everything is in position. We just got to make sure that we get a port as soon as we land. Because now, I think, yes, the Danish belts are closed. Italy wants to send us a lend lease and Germany wants to join. That's good to see. As soon as we arrive, we're going to get a manual order. Okay, we're going to get a manual order with four divisions to run to the nearest port. Let's see, how much supply do we have? All right, we don't have that much supply. Let's also send half of our army to get their victory points. And once that happens, let's send these guys to pin and one to go north and one to take the airfield. If we could take control of the straits, that would be amazing. But we need to get to that port first. I'm not sure what province actually gives control of the straits, but let's not worry about that. We're defeating them anyway without a port, which is very interesting. Uh, if we can just run around them anyway, that'd be great. Uh-oh, we got pinned. We finished improved infantry equipment. Let's go for another upgrade. And none of our aircraft are out. Interesting. All right, there we go. Now we have full superiority. And we did not get across here quick enough. If we can get control of the straits, then we should have no problem. Let's try and get this province again. Oh, look, it's going to work now. And we got a port. Let's get up here. Because we might lose this province. Oh, and we're doing fine now. We finished our first naval doctrine, so let's go down the same naval tree. And Romania joined the Axis. We just took the port, which I believe means we now have access to the Straits. No. Interesting. I guess we have to take this bit too, or maybe we have to capitulate them to take control of the Straits. I'm not exactly sure, but let's just run for their victory points. And they're completely encircled now. We got some more free troops. Let's assign them to this army. Oh look, we already made it to Copenhagen. And they're about to capitulate. And Denmark has just capitulated. Let's go down and take all states like usual. Perfect. And with that, I believe we're going to have to end episode two here. With a climatic ending, Germany about to invade Poland and the Angevin Empire slowly growing stronger. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button if you so desire, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.